FBLA. Welcome to the first episode of the No Show, where we try to uncover FBLA leaders' personalities. I am here with Anaya King, our Vice President of Communications for FBLA Arizona. So Anaya, go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Anaya King. Um, I'm a senior, and this is going to be my fourth year in FBLA. Currently, I serve as the Vice President of Communications for FBLA Arizona, and I'm really looking forward to this year. Fun. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, all right. So Anaya, um, I actually told you at the beginning of the show that I had a surprise for you whenever we were not recording. So I want to introduce my surprise. It's an air horn. <laughs> so it's an air horn. Whenever, whenever I feel like either of us are going to speech mode, I'll just click the air horn a little bit and it shows that we need to get out of speech mode. Okay. Okay. I'm only doing this for Anaya because she can handle a joke. We're good friends. So it's fine. <laughs> With what was the funniest moment of our state officer training for you? Because I feel like that we had a lot of fun moments and I, I have like a million of them. So I want to hear what was your funnest moment? Um, Probably the car rides with everybody. That was honestly an experience with some people. We had a lot of fun. We were like singing and screaming. And I'm not the best driver, as we all know. Um, I almost I didn't get in. You know, I wasn't with you and I, I almost got a crash with Alex. We told everybody because we were freaking out. She was calling her parents and it was not even my fault on that one. There was a person that just went right around the road and almost hit us. It's like, are you kidding me? But and I and I even came up with a new version of a song. It was, <laughs> people are going to think we're kind of nerdy for this one. It's party in the FBLA. So we, we switched up party in the USA. And honestly, if you heard this, just if you heard it, like it sounds like it sounds exactly alike. Like you just easily mix up the lyrics a little bit, even though it's just, USA into FBLA. It's just, it sounds really good. And so I'll give my favorite moment. I think my funniest moment was probably, and Anaya doesn't want me telling this story, but it was whenever we, we saw a ghost in, in the hotel. And I don't want, people are going to think that we didn't see a ghost, but we saw a ghost at that hotel. And we were just in the conference, a conference room just by ourselves. And suddenly we heard a, a shh, really loud shh. And I, I, I was like, I was freaking out. And I was like, oh, I don't really care about ghosts. It's fine. No, I was freaking out. That was scary. It was scary to see that ghost or not hear, or hear it. So then I tried to- yeah, We back. heard it. Yeah, we heard it. We heard it. And I tried to do a shh back and it didn't respond. And then, and I do want to tell the rest of the story. Yeah. So then after that, like we both tried to like do it to see if we were like as loud as we heard it and we weren't. And so then we like grabbed all of our stuff and we started like running out of the hotel and it was like pouring rain outside. It was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> See, now I didn't tell the story, the, the last part of that story though. She doesn't, she doesn't want it being told um, because it's more embarrassing for me, honestly. I was a lot more scared than her. And I was like, Anaya, I'm done with this. I raced back to my hotel room. I, I didn't even walk back to her hotel room with her. I was like, I, I'm scared. I'm, I'm going to run back to my hotel room. And that was this was like right before curfew too. So I'm glad that I raced back or I wouldn't make curfew. Um, I'm just going to say that that was the reason why I raced back. Not that I was scared because I didn't want to make curfew. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring up the escape room. So how challenging was the escape room, do you think, for our team? Um, in the beginning, I think it was honestly kind of a challenge because we all have such big personalities and we're all like so different that like we all kind of butted heads in the beginning. And then like <laughs> once a couple of people like finally got like the hang of like how to do it and things like that, we all like understood how we all sort of work with each other um it honestly was super easy like we finished like most of the escape room in the last 20 minutes so once we got like our egos put away it was pretty fun see I never put away my ego on that one but I did not do anything there I tried doing things I tried talking you to held my phone you stole my phone that's what you did yeah I stole your phone and I was like using the flashlights I was using two flashlights like looking around I was like huh let me see if I can find something I went under a chair and saw there's like any notes there there was no notes I thought it was like a little like a little scavenger hunt type thing. I, I was kind of, I didn't know what I was supposed to do there. I tried looking like I was doing something, but the truth is I, I really didn't do too much on that. I didn't put, a, I put a lot of effort into it, but it didn't turn out too good. So, and I, would you say that you were like one of the, like the key people that were helping us? No, I feel like I was like their assistant, like Jared and Allison. I feel like we're like, Jared, the yeah, key Jared and Allison people. came in clutch. Like they, they were so good. And I was just sort of their helper. Like I was like writing, like I was doing the math while like Allison was like telling me what to do. Like that, like, I just feel like I was like their assistant, but I definitely wasn't one of the people that just stole people's phones. And helped <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Me and Boston, we, we didn't really know what to do there. Boston and I were like, uh, this is, this is not really our thing. I don't think we did not know what to do at all. Like we just could not find anything. It was like, oh, anyways. So 
now to get onto more of like an informative part of this this little meeting, what do you want to call it, a show. Uh, so what was one piece of information that Team Try taught us that really stuck out to you and that you think is important enough to share to everybody? Um, that what we're doing here in like FBLA and like being officers, like it's for the members. Like a lot of times I feel people that become state officers, like they really do it for themselves. I like to make themselves look better, um, like on college apps and things like that. But we really forget that like we did do this for the members in the beginning, whether that was like for joining FBLA or like for becoming an officer. And so I feel like that's one of the biggest things that like I took away was that we have to like remember that we were here for the members. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Well, I, I like completely agree with that. I think their presentation is really good. They were, they were able to engage us with like that toy box. I'm sure that other states also know about that little toy box because it's a uh, toy story base. So we had slinkies, we had Play-Doh on there. And we were just messing around with the Play-Doh while they were speaking, but we were able to pay attention to too. I think that was honestly a good way to keep our attention though, it was giving us like a little stuff to play with. Because yeah, we, we all turned into five-year-olds just messing around with the slinky the whole time. I made yeah. them a bunch of little cowboy hats. <laughs> yeah. And then I always broke my slinky. I gave it to Nye to fix. She came in clutch. She, I had like three of them stuck together. And then Nye was able to get it out in like 30 seconds. It's like, Nye, how did you do that? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. So anyways, the, the thing that I thought stuck out to me the most was probably the handshake. Because I didn't realize how awkward I was in a handshake. Like Lolita and I were like trying to do the handshake. I realized I was like, I was going whenever it was apparently supposed to be her going. And I tried like making myself look dominant in the handshake. And then I'd hold on for too long. I'd be like, wait a minute. I never really overthought this until like I started doing the presentation. And I was like, wow, I might have needed this a little bit more than I thought. Like it was just, oof. Yeah, they did teach us all like those weird little skills that like we sort of like overlook that we like think like, oh, like we got it down. But then like, told us about it and then they like told us how it really should be and we're like oh yeah no we have no idea yeah <laughs> exactly um so during the pow a lot of us got really stressed i think that this is our first time that we were all turning into real leaders for this organization so on a scale of like one to ten how stressed do you think you were while making the pow so i'm not a very stressed out person i'd say that i was maybe like a solid three to four <laughs> like for being the absolute worst um I was sort of just say like helping everybody I didn't really like have like a big like part as far as like actual goals that were on the POW I was just more so like making sure that like everybody's like aligned and I was like I was writing a bunch of stuff down because you know that was my job but I was really just helping everybody out um so I wasn't really too stressed but a lot of people were really really stressed yeah I remember you had your Alex's glasses on Alex had these like glasses that were like <laughs> They also look like they're pretty cool. They look like these like big circular ones and they just, they fit Alex a lot. And then and Naya just took them and started writing down things with it. I have a photo and I'll, I'll probably display the photo whenever I like edit this all out to everybody. Cause I think it's the funniest photo ever. Whenever you just write it down with like the huge yeah. glasses. Yeah, I stole her sunglasses for like most of the trip. She only had her sunglasses when it was like actually sunny outside. And then the rest of the time I had her sunglasses. Yeah, because she, we were in like a conference room. I think we were doing chapter visit presentations and then Alex was like, it's sunny out here. It's really sunny in this room. And she just put on her whole glasses like, Alex, what are you doing? She was literally wearing her sunglasses like 24 seven. Like she, and then at one point she was like, I just can't do light. And then like did like a hair flip. So I, <laughs> I think, yeah, we all got really close in that trip. That was, that was so funny. I didn't realize that our team would be like that fun with each other. I didn't think that I'd see this in a state office, honestly. I thought I'd be like, not with people that I'd like honestly connect with this well. I didn't really expect that either. I was really, I thought like everybody was going to come into this like super, super serious, like super, super FBLA. Um, but a lot of us really connected as like good friends before we even connected over FBLA things. So it's actually really, really cool. Yeah, I like how you brought up like super, super FBLA because I, I even like when I made the show, I realized that everybody, because sometimes we so formal in FBLA, I, like they all go into what I call it like <laughs> speech mode, you know? But like, <laughs> does that, is that like really loud for you, Anaya? No, it's not. Okay, for me, it's like, it's just killing my ears. But yeah, I thought we'd, we'd all like be like really formal the whole time. So I'm super glad we really weren't like that. And then, so like to kind of go on to this conversation, how well do you think that the team bonded and what was one group memory that stuck out to you the most? So a group memory with all of us. Um, I think we bonded really good, actually. Like, yeah, we had some bumps, but, you know, we were a bunch of strangers with each other for five days in a row. That's kind of impossible not to have. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we all, like, became really, really good friends. Like, I'm still talking to everybody after, just on, like, a regular conversation basis, not even anything about FBLA. 
and um if anybody else feels the exact same way like I'm sure like they'd say the exact same thing that like we did bond really really well and as far as like my favorite team memory probably the POW because we were all like so not like stressed but I don't know like we were just like actually working I feel like for the first time together and so it was just cool to like see like everybody's like FBLA side come out and then like but still try to be funny because we're all like really funny with each other already yeah it was like a really like interesting dynamic because everybody had a part in the FBLA like not in the FBLA the POW in like their own way everybody contributed into it and we were all like we were stressed but at the same time we weren't yelling at each other we were just all working well with each other for the betterment of the members as well like team tribe brought up as well my favorite memory had to be let me see where, where did we go after dinner we went to we went to an ice cream shop and it just it was honestly great because that was the first time I think that we all bonded throughout that dinner and during the ice cream the ice cream shop I would call it uh that was the first time we bonded with the other CTSOs like we were with uh Deco the whole time yeah, we, were with Deco. we saw we saw skills there we saw Ed Rising we saw everybody there and we were all bonding really well and usually like you see Deca and FBLA you think that they would have like a lot of beef with each other but we didn't we were honestly we just grew into like what it felt like started to be like a like a family an organization family type thing it was great yeah it, it was it was honestly like <laughs> <laughs> Your mug. No, no, it was really, really fun. It was like because even Miss Goodman, she was like, normally FBLA and DECA don't get along, but like we were all best of friends. It was super cool. And it also made like the entire experience kind of like more bearable. Because if you ever got like annoyed with somebody in FBLA, you would just like go relax with DECA for a little bit and then yeah. it would be like be all better. Oh yeah, because we didn't have because we were with eight people for five days straight for like what? 16 hour days like it felt like we had like 16 hours a day just working 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 with each other and have some fun time as well but at the same time you got to have like other people as well to throw in there and that's what we found with DECA we found like a lot of like good people and all the other organizations were great too that we bonded with everybody we'd make sure that we bond with everybody we'd go to like other tables during breakfast and I don't know if they like that or not but <laughs> we had a lot of fun just bonding with everybody we, would, we took like a lot of pictures with everybody and we all just were none of us really had like a lot of like any conflicts with each other we're just great yeah no I I bonded with um by myself at least with Ed Rising the most because like we were always like getting coffee and like we had like a whole like 30 minute conversation at like the coffee table it was actually really cool um because everybody else we were more friends with rather than FBLA like we were really working with and so I think it was like really really cool that we got to like become friends with everybody well, yeah, not only that, but we were also able to get like a decent amount of ideas from other organizations because we had during the team tri training, we had like where we expressed our ideas or what we were working on their POW. And we saw some things that caught our eye. We're like, wait, that's a good idea. Maybe we should start implementing that in our next year as well. Yeah, I saw a lot of that with HOSA. Um, I feel like HOSA gave us a lot of ideas as far as like social media and things like that. And then even DECA as far as like different things that they host. And I feel like a lot of those like like those idea sharing activities like really influenced our POW this year. Yeah, I feel like the best part of like having on these other organizations, whenever we used to yell across the, well, not really across the hotel, we wouldn't do it in a rude way. We'd go like, what's up DECA? Or we'd be like, we love you DECA and stuff like that. And then they would respond back on like all saying at the same time. It was honestly great. It was really fun. It was a lot of fun. Hosa did that too. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, host would go like one, two, three. What's up, that feeling? <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> Anyways, Anaya, it was great to have you on the show. It was honestly like super fun to be able to film this first episode with you and honestly be able to practice with you. I call this my little pilot, pilot episode, like they always have, because I was able to like I made some mistakes, even though, and I feel like we worked on it. And I feel like it was just a great show to be working on with you. So I'm super glad that you took the time out of your day to be working on this show with me. So thank you so much, Anaya. Yeah, no problem. It was super, super fun. I think that it'll be really nice to finally like see everybody's like true personalities rather than being like super, super FBLA oriented. I know that's why that's why I'm excited about too. I'm excited to see how FBLA, I mean, FBLA leaders really act in person or like with their full personality out. It's honestly great. Yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And I, I never even got to use this, so no. Maybe, maybe I wasted that six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Anaya. Thank you, Noah.